73, it was Arsenal that paid us a visit. Radford, over his own head, Mickey and Kennedy is willing to run, but Beale again is there, making life difficult for the big Arsenal number 10, but in comes McNabb now. Kennedy, a low cross, oh, and Radford's almost there, maybe Charlie George will know, Martin Peters there, just in time for Tottenham. Lifted away, but only as far as Kelly, and the closest we've had to a goal yet. So Radford did a lot of good work in there, but it was Charlie George who very nearly managed to uh, get there when it really mattered. Gilzy to Chivers. And now Evans. McGrath on the far side, it'll be McGrath, or oh, Peters maybe! Oh, a tremendous header there by Peters! And very well saved by uh, Bob Wilson. But that really is why Peters gets that name, the ghost, because he ghosted him behind the whole of that Arsenal defence. They just didn't know he was there. Chivers. Played wide, and letting it go for Evans. Good crosser of the ball, Ray Evans. And that's nicely for Gilzine. And Chivers on the far side. And a great save again by Wilson. Well, it's Spurs who are making the breaks that look most promising at the moment. They've won another corner. It's a couple of times they've nearly got in on the far post. Knowles with his corner. Charlie George not getting it away. And Peters will struggle to keep it in. The whole of the ball not over the line. And Simpson coolly to Charlie George. Now it's Brady. Rice, Radford, and now Kelly, play towards Kennedy and Charlie George going in, that was some good tackling back by Martin Peters, George really went hustling in there, but I think that was another very good example, we've seen a lot of good attacking work by uh, Martin Peters, here's Charlie George. But Peters really did a magnificent job to get back so quickly and uh, challenge Charlie George. And now it's goals for Tottenham. Brady. McNabb. Kennedy winning it well in the air and gives Radford just this glimpse of an opening. And the ball was bouncing nastily there right in front of Barry Danes, getting a pat of encouragement from uh, Phil Beale because that could have been such an embarrassing moment for him from Radford. But with his body behind it, at least he managed just to poke it around the corner. Good searching interesting ball there which if it had fallen just a little bit shorter might well have gone well for Gilzine but instead it's Wilson and Radford caught a good eight yards offside another example of this offside trap that is in fact making the game go in fits and starts Knowles for the kick towards Chivers now Peters but shot down by Peters, and what a good save again by Bob Wilson. Peters really in sparkling form this afternoon, but so too is Bob Wilson. Three really magnificent saves by him so far this afternoon. Gills in with the head, Chivers is there too. And another shot well saved from Pratt by Wilson. Kennedy, McNabb, Charlie George. England is there, so is Brady for Arsenal. McNabb again making the running, but Pratt coming away for Tottenham. Only Gilzine is up. 
There's McGrath, though, with him. Kills in, and McGrath playing a nice one, too. Now, can the youngster get his cross in? A little further back than uh, Spurs would have wanted it. Chivers now on the ball for them. Perryman. Chivers. Charlie George. Armstrong. Kennedy. Kelly. Gilzean, red back, beautiful. And now Chivers. Arsenal doubling back as quickly as they can. Still Chivers. And now Gilzean, blasting that one against McNabb. And Simpson by now is across, and Spurs get a corner. What a lovely bit of reading of the game, though, by Gilzean. He was a step ahead of Arsenal and put Chivers on his way. So Chivers at the near post. Knowles with the corner. Deep towards McGrath, who just got his head to it. Gilzean with the overhead, and a little too high for Tottenham. So Bob Wilson under pressure there from the likes of Alan Gilzean and Martin Chivers. Armstrong, Peters, and Chivers. That's the strength of the man. That was an unfair challenge by Storey from behind. When the strength of Chivers had taken him past the first challenge, Storey looking inquiringly at the referee, but clearly had to be pulled back for that. Giving Spurs a free kick. Now it's with Evans. Will he let one fly? Oh, and another good save by Wilson. Well, Philip Beale came forward claiming offside. Bound to say that he was the only Spurs defender who did come forward, and I thought that Ray Evans on the far side had played Arsenal on side, but the linesman disagreed. Gives the free kick to Tottenham, and Knowles is taking it. Chivers and Storey having a tremendous scuffle there, and Gilzean has done it! Gilzean has done it! So Bob Wilson is beaten at last. The long kick helped on, and Gilzean just nudging it past Wilson. And that makes the score. Spurs won. Arsenal nil. Eight minutes to go. And it's Alan Gilzean's first league goal of the season. Arsenal a great side for bouncing back quickly. And Batson now leading the charge for them. And there's Charlie George, but he's lacking a bit of pace. Still kept it in, though. Kelly. The cross towards Kennedy and Rice. Still in play. Kennedy to Rice. Crossed once more towards Charlie George. And Kelly up on the far side. Turned in again. And Peters, who has had a splendid game, right back there, the last man for Tottenham, getting it away. Well, that's the form that England want to see from Martin Peters on uh, Wednesday at Wembley against the Poles. Really has had a magnificent game. Kelly's, or Kennedy rather, Simpson in there, Charlie George in there. McGrath can't really get it away. Batson hoping to blast it in. Brady, only story is back. Knowles, I think, got a knock on the face there. And Arsenal now really piling back at Spurs. Kelly in, and Peters once more away. England's boot, story's head. And away goes Spurs again for Chivers. It's two against two. And Chivers is on his way. McGrath. Gilzean right in there too. The cross there, not a particularly good one. Pratt. Gilzean and Kelly now. Well, at least we've got a rousing finish. Armstrong. Brady. Kennedy. Armstrong again.
very great game this fellow's had, Martin Peters. And away goes Gilzean again. Rice pounding there with him. Tottenham's throw. Big Chivers will come across to take it. Gilzean at the near post. Aim towards Martin Peters, a back header by him. McGrath and overhead, and that very nearly went for the youngster there. Pratt. Crossed again, Simpson is there for Arsenal. And McNabb. But there's McGrath. Perimer. Gilzean. Peters. Pratt. Here comes the cross for Chivers, and Rice was there instead. McGrath to Pratt. McGrath again. And Chivers racing for this one. Once he gets into his stride, there really is nobody who can outstrip him. Peters. Chivers again. Giving Peters that yard or so to put the cross in, but he leaves it instead for Perryman. Oh, what a collision there. I think Steve Perriman not only dummied Armstrong, he dummied himself. But it's obstruction, it's a free kick, and it's Knowles who's going to take it. Mike England has come up with his arm waving on the far side. It won't get to him. Oh, but it gets to Chivers! 2-0! Martin Chivers! Well, they must have been watching England, but it was playing short instead. And Chivers was there to nod it past Wilson, 2-0. Exactly one year later, they came for sweet revenge. Those boys from Highbury. Perryman, the linesman on this side, flagging hard offside against uh, Jimmy Nader. get on with it. It's a good dummy by Armstrong if Kelly can uh, pick it up. Well, he's beaten Peters. Good play there by Eddie Kelly. Still going on Kelly and across the face of the goal. What a good piece of play by Kelly. And it needed to be a good save in the end by Pat Jennings. Dispossessed uh, Peters so well there. Showed tremendous acceleration and a good finishing shot. Chivers. Peters up there with it. That's played for Martin Peters. And still with Peters, the chance now for Tottenham and Rupa had to come out. Feet first and put it behind for the corner. Nice build up there. Chivers passed to Peters and Peters somehow found the way through. Rimmer had to come out and concede the corner. Ten minutes to go to half time. Pratt with the corner for Tottenham. Simpson getting his head to that one. Armstrong, Story, good jump by Naylor, Brady, Radford off in pursuit, but he won't get to that. Chivers, Pratt will have this one, he's got Evans in a lot of space on the right, here he is. Austin again towards Chris Jones, played back there for Chivers, and it might still come for Berryman. Lost his footing there in that rather muddy six-yard area. But Spurs having a good little spell now as Jones, can he get this cross? He can't, but he's got a corner off Simpson. Goals really are at a premium with these two clubs. Only 28 goals scored by the pair of them in 27 games this season. for this game now as Knowles takes another corner for Tottenham it's a deeper one this time towards Mike England Perryman in there and what a good goal it is Stevie Perryman a brilliant goal for Tottenham Perryman's done it a corner there by Knowles got it down I think it was Martin Peters who probably got his header to it 
to it for England. And Perryman with a tremendous blockbuster. 1 0 to Tottenham. Knowles making one of those characteristic runs of his. Inside for Pratt. Challenged hard by Ball, and the ball ran nicely for Pratt there. And again for Pratt from Labour. Here's the cross by him. And Jones! Oh, what a beautiful move! Jones finally touching it in there, but Rimmer was equal to it. Lovely cross, well met by Jones and well taken by Rimmer. Perryman, well, he bravely went down. Yes, and uh, Brady is saying quite clearly to the referee, look, he ducked his head, it wasn't that my feet were high, but the referee has decided nonetheless it's a free kick to Tottenham. He's taken quite a knock there, Steve Perryman. <laughs> Both those young Spurs. Oh, look at that eye. My goodness, he really did catch a boot just under that uh, left eye. And he's got to come off. My heavens, that really was a tremendous crack he got there. You see it almost swelling moment by moment. As the game goes on. England, a good dominant header there. Spurs still down to ten men with Perryman wanting to come back on again, though. Now Story. Knowles. And Perryman coming back on again with that eye in a terrible condition. In fact, it says a lot for the spirit in the Spurs side that both he and Pratt are still playing as that shot from Brady goes way over. There's Perryman with an eye that I think would almost put a boxer out of business. And John Pratt, obviously, with that left arm heavily strapped, carrying it rather like Beckenbauer did in a famous uh, World Cup semi-final in 1970. Here's Ball. Nelson. Kidd. Naylor's right with him. Good ball there by Brian Kidd to Eddie Kelly. Now, and he's gone last Martin Peters. And what a good shot! deserves a goal in this game, it's Eddie Kelly, for the work that he's done and the inspiration he's been. Ball going in versus Perryman, Pratt, carrying that left arm more than ever now, John Pratt. Here's Chris Jones, really fighting fit. In for Pratt again, chip first time towards Chivers and played on for Peters if he can get there. Radford right back there. Neighbour with a shot. Oh, and what a good save again. Well taken shot by Jimmy Neighbour. Armstrong. Brady found some space in behind one or two Spurs defenders. A nice little drag back by him as well. There's the ball for Alan Ball. And the header by Radford. Oh, and what a good save. Super save by Jennings. Peters with the head of that time. Neighbour. It'll fall though for John Pratt. Chivers is in there, so too is Jones. That looked like handball by Simpson. And rather belatedly, the referee gave it. I don't know whether he was uh, delaying it, which is a brave thing for him to do to see whether there'd be any advantage for Tottenham. But undoubtedly, it was the right decision in the end. And it'll be a free kick, which Perryman will take for Tottenham chip in there I would think for Chivers or for England no it's a deeper one for Peters coming up on the far side and Chivers has scored number two number two for Tottenham free kick they were watching for Chivers and they were watching for England and they didn't really pick up Peters on the far side back across the goal a little duck in and Chivers can make it 2-0 Kelly High towards Radford, winning it in the air. Knowles acrobatically getting that one away. Neighbour. Played nicely there for Knowles. Played on for Chris Jones versus Peter Storey. Two Spurs are up in support. Here's Neighbour on the ball for him. Chivers has gone into the middle. Here's Chivers. 
Will he get it onto that left foot? He has, and a good save that time from Miller. Action now at both ends. As Kelly now takes it for Arsenal. A good ball by him, and Alan Ball was onside, in fact, but it must have been a handball by Kelly as he controlled it. Six minutes to go. Well, for atmosphere, I think this is what London football has been looking for for quite some time. Peters. Oh, he's got maybe a chance of a shot now. Chivers. Oh, and it went against the crossbar. Well, 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 well. How did Rimmer get his hands to that? Reacting so well. Just pushed it against the crossbar from Martin Chivers. And there goes the final whistle, which is a victory for Spurs. Another victory over the old enemy. Now we see the introduction of Glenn Hoddle. It's away. Victoria Ground Stoke. And it's Glenn's first full league game. February 1976. Fenneman. Stead. Ava gave the ball away. It's on from Moores to Hazelray. Greenoff's getting set in the middle. Behind him, but it's on for Robertson to score. Well, Greenoff did. 1 0. Greenoff, five minutes into the game. All starting then with a bad bit of football between Stead and number 11, Jimmy Neighbour, down here in front of us. Hasselgrave was onto it, sped away across the box. Robertson looked as though he was going to shoot, but stuck up a perfect pass for Greenoff to score. Lost his feet to Duncan, and Bloor knocks it forward again. Greenoff. Oh, Robertson. Willie Young gets it away. France, a nice little ball for Perryman, and Smith was thundering in on that. Now it's Hudson, and Smith's gone on again. Could be offside if he doesn't watch his step. Goes instead for Greenoff. Smith's still in the box, so's Moore. They've got height there now. Didn't get the ball up high enough. In again comes Skills, and it's Perryman coming out for Spurs. Chivers to his left. Chivers now. Moores has come back to have a go at Chivers. Ball. Neighbour. He attacks Dodd. That's useful. And that's Duncan. Duncan is eager and genetic. Scott snaps up. The equaliser. His 20th goal of the season. 28 minutes gone. That was a good breakout for Spurs. Chivers the ball across the park to Jimmy Neighbour. His cross into the box confused Stoke for a moment, and while they hesitated, Duncan was snapping the goal. <laughs> taking on Dodd, brought down by Dodd. And Dodd had better watch his step. He's already had one very, very firm word from referee Peter Willis. Perriman then with this free kick. Far post for Young. Smith up, and that was Pratt trying it. Duncan there, and in for Shivers. Needs a lob from Hoddle. He did tremendously well, then Hoddle. 2-1 Spurs. 36 minutes gone. Glenn Hoddle in his first regular match for the side gets the applause of his colleagues and Schultz shake of the head in anger as he puts Spurs 2-1 up his first ever goal for the first team Glenn Hoddle 17 years old someday for him that ball bobbling about a long time and certainly I thought with Schultz on his line Hoddle might have chipped it but he struck it hard instead Here's the corner from Hudson. A lot of curl on that. And Moore got there and it was off the line by Pratt. Superb curving corner from Hudson. A tremendous jump by Moores. Beat Jennings and Pratt, the hero of the hour for Spurs. Right on the goal line, knocked it away. Carl by Young. And Moores.
Hudson and Summers. Hudson takes it, hoiks it in there for Moores. And that's a goal. Oh, no, Kenning's got there from Smith. Petronins really is the most remarkable fellow. Smith shaking his head, can't believe it. Absolutely cannot believe it. Hudson's kick comes on. Smith heads to what looks like an empty net, and Jennings, a fantastic save. Jennings there again, gets the punch. Skills. Hoddle gets it away. Salmon's now. Tipped on and Young knocks it away for the corner. Spurs soaking up a lot of pressure. They're still standing okay. Stokes eighth corner, the second half. Salmons now curl it in. It's good height. Moore's it was off the top of Chiver's head. Dodd in there again, but that'll come out nicely for Hoddle. Pratt calling it for it left side. Hoddle going all the way to try, and it took a deflection, goes for a corner left side. That uh, goal that he scored in the first half has added to the confidence of Glenn Hoddle. Certainly looking for a second one then. So Pratt will take the corner. The action swinging to the other end of the field. Pressure now on to the shot, where it had previously been on Pat Jennings. Young beaten in the air by Dodd. Salmons didn't get it too far. Hoddle. Moores comes up. Perriman is there for Spurs. Our neighbour. Hoddle. And into his own player. The little chip back coming from Hudson to Shaw. Young's jump. It's from Robertson. And Stead was there to cover. And that's not long enough. Chris Jones is going to get there. Oh, floor covered well. Lumsden, a dodgy moment for the youngster then. Moores. Young staying tight to Moores. Hudson on for Robertson. Goes for Salmons. Now Spurs scamper back. Bouncing shot and Jennings holds it. That was an awkward one for Jennings from Salmons. Hit early, hit the ground, so you to pick up a bit of pace, bobbled a bit, and Jennings had to fall. Law's gone up into the box with Smith. Salmons is going to reach and try and get to them. Hoddle got it away. Hudson. Moore's under this, Jennings, good punch. Still in there, though, for Salmons. Hudson. Moore's down and wide. Dennis Smith, who got on the end of it, just wide of the goals. Is it a bit nerve-wracking, though, uh, coming out as a starter for the very first time? Yes, it, it was. Yeah, very, especially away. You know, if you got some, if you're at home with your debut and you get some crowd behind it, but. I enjoyed it still, and uh, the lads helped me on. Right, I think uh, many of the Spurs fans will find you a bit of a new face. You're 18 years old. Where'd you come from, Glenn? Uh, well, I come from Harlow, and I was born in Hayes. So. Well, you're dying to tell us about the goal, the match winner. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> How did you actually get it yourself? Well, it came out. I don't know who played it out, but uh, come out, and John Pratt said hit it, and uh, you know, so I hit it, uh, and uh, it was going like. And to see Pitt Shelton put his hand out, and I thought he'd tapped it around. And then I just saw it at the net. That was it. Glenn on the path to glory. The next season, Spurs were relegated. But it wasn't all doing it. Slight misunderstanding there between um, Maysfield and uh, Phillips. Here's Ray Gray. Mortimer in a fair bit of space. And in with a chance of the shot if he doesn't delay too long. Here's Little. Spurs back in numbers, but here's Graydon who got behind two of them. Little, look at the spin on the ball. Gray! What a let-up 
for Tottenham from the young man voted by the professional players as their young player and indeed their best player of the season. Had a clear chance then as the spinning ball was pushed in by Brian Little. And Pat Jennings, I think, would have had no chance at all if Andy Gray had connected with that properly. On such things, relegation can turn. Gordon Smith. Hoddle. Well taken by Coates, well left by Hoddle. Here's Moores. Well, he picked it out, but he put it wide. Good build up on the right, involving Huddle and Ralph Coates. Coates taking it nicely in his stride and putting in a good cross, finding his man. Moore's not quite finding the spot that he wanted. Outside the area. Came rather charging in, did Maysfield. Saw Andy Gray go through the picture then. An indication that Villa have indeed pulled everybody back. All 11 Aston Villa players are in the Aston Villa 18 yard area. Pratt and Hoddle on the ball. Stead to the left. Now moving further forward. Hoddle might try to curl one. And does. And makes it! Oh, a beauty! A beauty! That is class! Beautifully done. Burridge had no chance. I would love to see the swerve and curl on that because it must have been quite considerable. Glenn Hoddle. Every time we see him, he shows himself a name to remember. Jones, but are suddenly caught with too many men forward, saved by Nicol, but here is Pratt. Don't know whether Phillips touched that, but Pratt's shots arriving very awkwardly for John Burridge. Great kick that time, not against Stead, he was the man pushed against John Deere. pulling the line forward, so is Phillips. There's Pratt. Armstrong! Two good saves. Huddle. And in the end, the softy. So much power in that shot. Burridge simply put his fist there and knocked it straight up. Keith Verkenshaw on the right in the back row. Good use of the chest by Gray. Here's Mortimer. There are times when he's a knife through butter in this defence. Here's Graydon. Well, the body doing the work then for the keeper. Where the hands didn't, the body all behind the shot of Ray Graydon. Pratt. Graydon. Cropley, Dean, Little, Mortimer just to his right, it's a question of timing the pass. Disappointing cross from Dennis Mortimer. The substitution ready to be made, the number nine up for loft and number nine disappearing. Ian Moores to be replaced by Peter Taylor. Nickel, Huddle, Coates, Naylor. Armstrong, Huddle. When luck 
Mark is so desperately needed. It won't come. Hoddle's left foot effort rolling on the crossbar. Jones, Hoddle, Nickel. Here's Hoddle, here's Jones. Oh, yes! Oh, what about that? What about that? And look what it means. Just listen to what it means. It means that they've struggled off their knees to be back on their feet again. Whatever happens, whether they go down or not, they're going down fighting. Back in the lead with a goal by Chris Jones. A superb pirouette and a real crunch to the far corner. Five minutes left and Tottenham suddenly see a different horizon. How can the hatches be battened down not to give away this priceless extra point gain? Mortimer's shot. <laughs> Keith Birkinshaw on his feet in the director's box. Here's Armstrong. Coates, Taylor over this side, so is Pratt. Armstrong trying to find Taylor, and here he is, and that's another! And they're all vital! Goal difference could be so important. Although Tottenham's really, to be fair, is so bad. But it's on a par with West Ham's. Utter delight now. Taylor was free for an awful long time and it finally came through to him. And he rifles home Tottenham's third goal of the match. And to the cry of easy, easy. Now it's early days in our return to Division One and the pensioners come to White Hart Lane. Really after this one. Steve Wicks was taking no chances with that. Now Ardenas. Velia. Oh, good play by Velia. Ardenas. Oh, a lovely combination here. And it's gone for a goal. Duncan, the man who will be credited with it. The work undeniably, though, of the two Argentinians. And Spurs are in the lead. So the joy then for Tottenham, but how it was made by the two Argentinians, a lovely back heel there by Villa, beautiful fleeting skills by Ardiles, and a cross that finished off with Duncan putting it beyond Bonetti. And the crowd are chanting Argentina, as you could probably hear, well aware of the Spurs fans, that that is a major contribution by these two Argentinians who cost between them £700,000. It's into the net and put there by Ken Swain. What a reply by Chelsea. 1-1. A moment of hesitation. And the man who kept his head superbly there was Ken Swain. He took it uh, beyond Barry Danes and into the roof of the net. Two goals in a minute. And the score, Spurs won, Chelsea won. A little lucky there. I don't think Glenn Hoddle meant that pass to find Gorman, but it went into the space and Gorman quickly filled it. Here's Ardiles. Hoddle again. McNabb. Duncan. Now, can he turn? Can he get a shot? Hoddle. McAllister. McNabb. Coming wide again for Gorman. In for Ardiles. Played in nicely there for Duncan. And a back heeler for Ardenas, just tucking it wide. But good combination. 
And Ardiles clearly beginning to find his feet on English soil. One or two things he's done this afternoon, and there he used that little bit of acceleration. It was a good, swift ground pass there for Duncan. Played back out to him. He took it on, but nicked it just wide. Spurs playing with a little more confidence than they showed when they were really dumped on the floor by Villa in midweek. Chelsea who have a home defeat against Everton and a victory at Wolverhampton so far to their credit this season. Villa now for Tottenham to Ardiles. All played on beautifully by Ardiles for Villa. Now can he turn and do something about it? Armstrong with a shot! And again the Argentinians have made it! Jerry Armstrong will finish it off on the stroke of half time. Two Tottenham goals, both made by these Argentinians. The first one finished off by Duncan, that one finished off by Armstrong. What a lovely ball played there by Ardiles. And how well it was played back also for Jerry Armstrong. And Armstrong hammered that into the roof of the net. Chelsea have a lot to offer yet. Playing it almost casually there for Droy. Langley having a tussle with Lacey. Wilkins again, look at that beautiful ball. Played first time there for Locke. Here he is again. Played in first time this time for Hay. And Locke again, curling in a good one to Swain once more. And that's another goal. 2-2. Within two minutes of the start of the second half, Chelsea have got back on terms. And I think Spurs will look around themselves and say that was a sloppy one to give away. As that long cross came looping in, Swain, really not severely challenged, was able to get up and then place it almost gently, it seemed, wide of Barry Danes. And Spurs 2, Chelsea 2. does look exciting when he gets on the move to Zardilis. It's hot. He looks pretty useful too. And there's a little chip just over. The sign of things to come really for the Tottenham fans. Combination of Ardiles and Hoddle there because Ardiles, when he really gets on the move, those little strides of his and the beautiful skills and then the pass to Hoddle and the chip that was just too high. McNabb, game opening up beautifully at this uh, phase. Hoddle, played in again for Neil McNabb, but uh, Wicks is there, given away to Ardiles. Play for Villa. Ardiles supporting him. And played for McNabb. Oh, what a beautiful bit of skill. Well, McNabb has contributed uh, greatly for this game as well. And Villa was aware that uh, the midfield man was coming into a striking position. The ball wasn't played all that kindly, in fact, towards McNabb, but beautiful skills enabled him to get a good shot in. And that wasn't far off the mark. Armstrong. Ooh, that was uh, hit in with uh, considerable power until Wicks got in the way. Armstrong again. Chipped in this time. That was a good piece of play there. Filia. Why oh, word hit that well? And a beautiful save by Bonetti from Duncan. First point about that was Filia's crashing shot. And then when it came to Duncan, a beautiful piece of goalkeeping by Peter Bonetti. Now for some second division action. In case you thought I'd forgotten. We had a bonanza game there against Bristol Rovers. In case you should lose count, it's 9-0. This is Staniforth looking for Gould. Perryman in the way. Again, good approach play by Tottenham. Here's Hoddle. Moore's got up there. Lee got it. Lee trying again. Play the 
shaking off Gould. Four Tottenham players ahead of him. Five now that Hoddle's made a run down the right. Just how the second goal came, really. Taylor! Peter Taylor makes it three. Here's McAllister. Oh, a lovely dummy by Peter Taylor. He's got four in the middle as well. Taylor leaving it. Moores is through. <laughs> Has to be said without taking anything at all away from Tottenham that Bristol Rovers looked a very poor side, especially in defence. And as Moores on again here for the hat trick. He's got it. He's got his third as well. Hoddle. Oh, and John Pratt's away. Lee is in the middle. Taylor trying to get there. It's going to come to Taylor now. It's come to Lee. Eight. Morse. Offside, perhaps, but the referee's given the goal. 